Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics. And a special episode of the show tonight. Everyone who's been following Silver for any amount of time, I think has been stunned by what's happened in the recent days. In many ways, encouraged by what's happened as we saw short squeezes from the Wall Street Bets Group, which then turned some attention to what People have been watching my show and even studying this for decades before have been confused about in the silver market. I'm encouraged because I understand there's more people than ever that genuinely just want honest financial markets, honest, restore capitalism as a genuine concept of good that it should be. And we have a special video that I think people should see because there's a lot of things that seem confusing. We have had panic buying in the silver market. I've never said that on the show before because I've never seen it before. And I've talked to multiple people who have been around since before the Hunt brothers, including Andy Schechtman. I checked in with him right before recording this and he described the same thing you've heard him say on many shows. So before we show that, I just wanted to bring on Daniel of the Wall Street Silver Group which is not the same as the Wall Street Bets group, but Daniel contacted me tonight because he's representing a group of people that are just going after the truth. And I really have been designing a lot of the content so that I could answer a lot of those questions that people have and really encourage more people to begin investigating what's going on. I think this situation is very close to breaking myself. And I've never said that on the air before. So with that said, Daniel, could you just tell a minute about the group and what you guys are doing? And I think that what everyone sees tonight will be helpful. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for having me on. Uh, basically, what the guys did over there at Wall Street Bets um, was amazing. And uh, it pretty much showed us the way. And I just want to have people come to Wall Street Silver to get the information that they need. We're not trying to press anything. I think there's a lot of information that's been out there that basically needs to be put in everybody's mind. And I need people to understand that it's not just us. It is the entire world that knows this. It is the entire world that wants the information and the truth out there. And I'm just saying, just if you could just come by, take five minutes of your day, if you wanna sit there and read what we have to say, I just think, I think you will be amazed. Well, Daniel, I appreciate that. We will have the link in the description field below. You can also just Google Wall Street Silver and find it. And again, I appreciate, Danny, that you reached out. It was perfect timing. Chris, this is all perfect timing. Um, the moment is now. And uh, it, this moment is now. You, you, you got to like silver. Silver's been around and silver's going to stay. And I'm letting you know, you got to like silver. I love what it stands for. And I think anyone who's ever been confused about any of the things that they've seen in the silver market. Well, we're gonna answer some of those questions tonight. All right, I just wanted to share that. I think now I'm ready for the silver Super Bowl. Okay, I'll turn it over to you, Chris. <laughs> I thought it was a great video. I think I did a really good job of it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Now I'm all pumped up. So uh, tell us what we've been seeing in the last few days, Chris. I know we had a bunch of money come into SLV last week, and then I think we shattered we, we hit an all-time record on Friday. We shattered it. I think it was yesterday. Uh, why don't you tell our uh, viewers exactly what happened and what it means? Well, uh, I know there's a lot of commentary going around, especially in the mainstream media, about... Uh, and actually, Rob, could you pull up that... Or wait, maybe I have that one here. We'll get I've to your link in a second. No, no, no. Actually, I want to pull this one up first because... The silver squeeze last Wednesday did not exist. We had the other stocks that got squeezed. Then Thursday, there was talk about it. You can maybe label it however you want. I'll, I'll call Friday day one of silver squeeze, if that's okay. And <clears throat> think about what happened those last couple of days. We could look at, actually, let me, here we'll pull this up first. Here's the story from TD Securities. This came out yesterday saying the silver squeeze is dead. Tenants of a successful squeeze, a, a viral narrative as a catalyst, high short interest, an illiquid security in an active option market. 
these principles don't bode well for the attempted squeeze on silver, given the liquidity. Based, the evidence suggests the virality of the silver squeeze has already peaked based on Google searches trending lower. Because <laughs> that's what determines silver prices is Google searches. According to TD Ameritrade, that is. And that's why I think this is important. And I, I sure appreciate, again, Rob, you giving me the chance to speak to your audience because I've gotten hundreds of questions and I've tried to find a way to create something that many people can see at once because I think this is that important. So this that I know a lot of people saw, firstly, the, the second I read this, I actually do have a TD Ameritrade account. And as soon as it is feasibly possible, this just does not feel right to me and I will be leaving, but we'll leave that aside. Here, the, their evidence is Google searches are down, discretionary money managers, China smart money funds and CTAs are tilted long. Rob, could perhaps you translate that into English. Does that mean anything that I'm just not grasping? Uh, which part, the silver squeeze, the bottom? I mean, I, I can't even understand what they're trying to say Dis there. The China smart money funds. How is this the, talking about China smart money funds when Rob, you just pulled the SLV figures. In fact, let's bring up the chart on that because we had on day one of silver squeeze and day goes by, people are talking about silver, buying silver, a lot of talk about SLV. Mm -hmm. And Friday evening, I'm sure that was, I must have called you because I was mind blown when I saw it. We had, they, they reported that 34 million ounces were added into the SLV Silver Trust. Mm -hmm. Put that in perspective, Here's the projections, latest projections from Silver Institute. You can find this on their site. You got to go to the press releases page. And this is key components of silver market affected by a pandemic in 2020. Rob, I'll send you the link if you want to share that with folks. Um, if anybody wants to take a look at this themselves. So... <clears throat> <clears throat> you can see here's total supply. This is a thousand million, so this is about a billion each year. Looks pretty constant, except for last year when the supply went down, Rob. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that they say it only went down 50 million ounces, given how long Corona shut down the mines and the impact it made. And some, a lot of executives still can't travel between countries, but we'll leave that. So we'll say it's going to be about a billion. Then you have, here's the demand. So on Friday, when you and I were discussing it, and I thank you so much for helping to walk through this, it was incredibly helpful. When I see 34 million, so 34 goes into 100 about three times, into 1,000 about 30 times. So that means at the pace of Friday, when 34 million shares were added to SLV, that 30 days like that, if metal was actually added, would take the entire global supply for the world in 30 days at that rate, okay? And Rob, again, I'll, I'll ask you, uh, I know some of this, I'm trying to keep it as simple, a complex topic, as simple as possible. If there's anything you think I should explain again or repeat, please just let me know and I'm happy to do so. Sound good? Sounds good. So then you, you know, so you could say, what happened Friday, 30 days like that would eat the annual billion ounces. But then Saturday, as I thought about a little more, I don't, I mean, while that's true, I don't think that's the best way to put in context how big 34 million ounces is. Because here we look at industrial, cell phones, solar panels, electronic, Biden's talking about going green. Rob, is it safe to say that it's hard to see this number coming down a lot, right? Right. Same photography, jewelry, silverware. You know, you can see this has been around 500. Every person I've ever heard talk about silver says as we go electronic, it's growing. Photography, fine, coming down a little bit over the last decade. Jewelry, around 150 to 200. So these look kind of stable. Safe to say? Yeah, I think 466, so. 28, let's call that 500. Let's call this another 200. So that's 700 ounces about ballpark in these four buckets. Now here in net physical investment demand, it's 
Now we see the last 10 years, 197, 271. Um, even when the market was getting destroyed, there's 2013, not a fun year for silver, 301, 312. So you could say these last couple of years were pretty low, mm -hmm. but based on what, actually, Rob, could you share your impression of what you've heard from the bullion dealers that you, that are the, the companies actually selling metals? Um, I don't know if you saw today on the front of CNBC, I mean... <laughs> They had the owner of JM Bullion, mm -hmm. which if you had asked me the odds of ever seeing a uh, silver dealer on CNBC, <laughs> they had the owner of an interview with the owner of JM Bullion, and he was talking about how all their silver is getting bought out. Now they're seeing the supply lines shrink up. Actually, the highlight was when the CNBC host, he looked so flummoxed and he was saying, it's like, so where, where if I may ask, where are you going to get the silver from? Do you, do you get it from the Federal Reserve? Mm-hmm which I thought was pretty <laughs> funny. I don't think they're going to get, Rob, I'll ask you. You're, in fact, if you could play the role of auditor and just, I implore you like I've been for the last 24 hours to tell me if there's any gray area or if you can find any even conceivable flaw in the logic that I'm going to walk through here. Is that mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, go for it. Um, so I asked, uh, John Sheckman and Miles Franklin, uh, it's Andy's wife on Monday, you know, we're seeing tons of emails, my partner, Yara, who handles the bullion sales that uh, the orders that we get. I mean, it's just like, imagine if you wake up and there's 800 in mails, emails in your box and it's like, you can't, you're like, all right, well, I'm going to get to as many as I can, as fast as I can, but you just, it's like, you know, you can't finish it. So I asked Jana, would you say this is by far and away the most business you've ever done in the history of the company? She writes back and says, it's like toilet paper in 2020. <laughs> so based on that, you can tell me if you, if that doesn't sound accurate, if there's any, can you point to any data point that does not match the same level of that statement that you've heard from bullion dealers regarding silver? No, we just had two at our at our conference uh, last week. Uh, SD Bullion and um, Andy Sheckman from Miles Franklin, and we followed up with both of them after the conference, especially over the weekend. And they're saying the the sales are ten times, sometimes twenty times, uh, a normal weekend or a normal day. And a lot of them are claiming to have very very little inventory. Well, Rob, I have a. Uh... Another question. Give me one moment. I'll pull this one up. Again, we saw that TD Ameritrade cited, I mean, they cited some data. They cited the, you know, Google searches. Uh, they didn't mention anything about this that came out later in the day. U.S. Mints, it can't, Mint warns it can't meet surging demand. Let's go right to the statement from the Mint. I mean, there's more statements. Here's Singapore. Massive shortages will be completely out of stock if it carries on like this. First time since our company opened. So verifying that I'm not making up what uh, Miles Franklin said. Mm -hmm. Physical premium to papers, uh, silver prices soared. My partner Yara says people are buying silver. They don't care what the premium is. They just want it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've gone out of my way to put headlines in my channel. And when I go and talk on other channels in a responsible way, I'm sharing my opinion. I'm not a personal financial advisor. I just share the research. And I also understand it's different people listening. And I go out of my way to phrase things in a way that are not sensationalized. I hope that comes through. But let's, would you say it's safe to say, Rob, that when people don't care about the premiums, is that panic buying? Yes, it is. U.S. Mint said on Tuesday it was unable to meet surging demand for gold and silver through uh, joins in 2020 and through January due to pandemic. Okay, so now the Mint is offline. You see all the dealers are saying the same thing. I don't... You, you gave some metric of the numbers. And then to finish up the... Back to the Silver Trust... So based on that, kind of hard to see net physical. We might have sold 236 million ounces in the last couple of days. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe that's maybe that's a lot, but it 
If it 10 x so hard to see that number coming down. So that means that let's say the if the numbers were similar to last year, or at least the same, if not bigger, demand was 931, supply was 962. And here back to SLV, you see this line here, net investment in ETPs is 350 million ounces last year. So on Friday, when there was 34 million ounces into the SLV trust, first I was thinking, well, it's one thirtieth of the annual supply. It's one tenth mm -hmm. of what went into the trust last year. But Rob, I mean, you, you, you probably actually studied and paid attention in accounting classes in college <laughs> while I was, you know, thinking about playing a guitar or something. But would I be correct in saying that in true accounting measures? What was really available for supply to SLV and the trust last year was 31 and a half, not 350, because this was a deficit. That's like putting it on the credit card. Right. So then when you think about it, that means that what was actually available for the trust last year, 31 and a half, SLV claims to have added 34 million on Friday alone in one day. And then followed that up this week with a 61 million number. Well, don't. Well, that's true. Which I think that's when. Well, it was back. We had yes. Monday was 20. Mm -hmm. And then actually, it was it was nice. Rob stopped by to visit last night, and it was. I guess I was watching a video. Bix Weir put out the, the videos showing that it was 61 million ounces yesterday. So let's put even further perspective here. So here's the 35 on Friday, which you basically, they, Nick Laird, who has this great site, let's give some credit to Gold Charts or Us, well mm -hmm. worth your subscription. Trust me, with the map, this money will make, this site will make you more than the 200 bucks a year in the next year. I would guarantee that. Um, so, what do we have? This is the one year chart. Okay. So this spike is how much represents how much silver was added or when it's red subtracted from SLV. There's a couple other trusts. You can see, oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> Basically it went vertical in since, okay. I would ask, <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Daniel, but in, in terms of disputing the article, if, mm -hmm. if there's something that I'm missing uh, where he sees no signs of, of the movement picking up, I would suggest that he should look at this or mm -hmm. look at any of the data points or, you know, we can go to, uh, let's go to CNBC and see if, JM Bullion is still on the front where the guy there was actually on the front page this morning. So maybe, uh, maybe that's old news by now already, but, <laughs> or no, I found it on YouTube this morning. Maybe somebody sent it to me, but he was there. You go, I'm sure people can find it. So Rob, as an auditor, and you remember, we talked about this the other night. We did an option call on Sunday. Mm -hmm. We're saying what, what, you know, like some guesses. Nobody knows the future, but we did it. Silver was already up two bucks or so. People were excited. And, you know, when I was thinking through what we had seen over the weekend, I'm like, gee, this is, uh, seems like the cat's out of the bag because it was always based on keeping a secret. And now the secret's getting out and it's always been the most intriguing story. I mean, that's why I was writing and uh, talking about it for 10 years before nobody cared because it's like, I don't know how long this will be. Maybe it'll go on longer. Like when I left the floor in 2012, I would have bet huge that it would never, if you told me silver was 25 bucks, 10 years later, nine years later. And we've all learned that lesson that it goes on longer than you think it can, but mm -hmm. If people are buying metals, we saw on Monday that when the metal spikes up, there's a lot of interest in people buy. 
And as we talked about on Sunday, we said, well, there's, you know, you would expect the banks like the devil fighting to keep himself alive to throw in the kitchen sink, right? And I believe, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I'm going uh, <laughs> to have to try too hard to convince anyone of this, that we saw that yesterday when in the face of historic buying, here's silver, uh, you know, open Sunday night spikes up, then gets up to, the futures got over 30, then gets clobbered last night into, uh, see this is, red is Monday, green is Tuesday. And Rob, again, uh, as an auditor, I'm curious if you think, actually, could you pull up the, uh, that link I sent you now? Sure. Because remember, I believe it was Monday, the margin, uh, margins were raised. So you already have some sensitivity in the market, things up a lot. And uh, we know how banks have this history of hammering uh, paper on the market. I can pull up the chart of that as well, if anybody would like to see it. But actually, Rob, could you go back up to the, the headline, please? Yes, sir. So here's a headline. This is Tuesday morning, February 2nd at 4.59 a.m. Eastern time. So Europe's been open, but this is while well, most people are still asleep. And the headline is miners decline as JP Morgan downgrades the sector and silver prices slide from eight year highs. Now, again, as a student of neurolinguistic programming, the way I would imagine someone and having studied for the last 20 years, including trading, research, writing, psychology research, miners decline as JP Morgan downgrades sector. Rob, if you read that, does that not at least in, whether intentionally or not, give the impression a, a direct cause and effect. The miners declined because JP Morgan said they're going down, right? That's right. Yeah. So can you scroll down? Let's see. Be, right, hold on a second, Rob, before you scroll. What and what by what metric are they making this claim? I'm curious before the audience sees, you know, we just talked about the SLV demand. I mean, you saw David Morgan on Sunday. Bill Murphy, who were around for the Hunt Brothers, and I asked them, have you ever seen anything? This was Sunday, even before we saw what happened in the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. Like, does this clearly feel different than anything you've ever seen? And what it, they all said, yes. Am I correct? Yep. So I'm curious. I was curious. Okay. Wow. That's interesting. A lot, a lot of people buying and JP Morgan saying to sell. And according to the way this headline's phrased, it either people sold because of that recommendation, or maybe with after reading this headline, they would be led to sell or to think that might be a wise thing to do if they trust JP Morgan, despite the fact that JP Morgan last month or a couple months ago paid $1 billion for manipulating the gold and silver markets. And the silver market includes the silver price. So when you see a headline like this, I would think, gee, I'll be darn fascinated to see if they are downgrading the sector and to say to sell, well, there's historic buying that in three days, actually, Rob, here's another way of putting it. You remember how much silver the Hunt brothers acquired at their peak? No, I don't. How much was it? I think it was like around 100 or 110 or 120 million ounces. Hmm. And so if SLV claims in the last three days, 60 and 35, that's 95 and 20 is 115. So JP Morgan is downgrading the silver price recommendation. While in three days, SLV is reporting more metal added into the trust than the Hunt brothers owned, possibly more than Warren Buffett owned. The only person that's ever owned more silver than that is JP Morgan. And mm -hmm. you don't even have to speculate about some of the other categories. Rob, if you maybe a little later, you can pull up their COMEX inventory report. See, actually, I haven't checked that yet. I'm wondering if there's been any change in their report. But so more silver was purchased than any of these occasions. And, Jeep, and while that buying is going on, they think it's going lower. So I'm sure that they explain where I'm wrong there. So can you slide down and show the audience what what they pointed out that I was missing. 
maybe you can skim through, read a, read a sentence or find. JP Morgan Where's said it? that the European mining and metal sector has been one of the standouts in the past year up 150%. So they're basically saying, uh, well, I want to point out something before we go down here and I highlighted it. They're saying that mining is down as JP Morgan downgrades it, but the, the general stock market is up. So they're doing two things here. They're saying miners are down, JP Morgan's downgrading silver prices. But hey, if you go into the markets, uh, those markets are up. So why don't you go invest in Europe? So it's kind of a, a it's show game. It's don't look over here, go look over here. Um, the investment bank kept BHP, its top pick in Rio, Tenor, Rio Tinto overweight, but down graded Anglo-American and compounding some woes for some miners is a slip in silver, which touched eight year highs on Monday and a wave of retail trading interest. See me group. Rob, I'm, I'm going to get a snack. Let me know when you get to the part <laughs> red that they talk about the, the order flow. Okay. I'll be back in a little bit. Sure. <laughs> so you tell me where to go. I don't, I couldn't find it. You're, yeah. I, that's why I was asking for your help. I know you're an auditor I, and I don't know, maybe I'm, I understand. I, I understand fully. And for anybody who's ever watched any of my videos or, or seen or talked to me, I know I've been fixated on silver. So I allow for the fact that maybe I'm too close to it sometimes. And, you know, I think Rob, you've seen my channel for a while, pretty much until mm -hmm. the last couple of days. I think I've been pretty consistent saying this is inevitable. Even as of a month ago, I was saying, you know, it seems like it could be any day, but you know, hey, maybe it could be another couple of years. And this is something that they like to do in the financial media. They like to put out a headline like this and back it up with nothing. Um, the first thing that they're doing is saying, is indicating, are trying to link together JP Morgan downgrading the sector, which they got a lot of crap for today, by the way. Uh, there was another article on Zero Hedge about that. It, even on so the CNBC, minor, the miners are down. But if you go over here, it's all good. And then in the article, we're not actually going to address this piece of it. We're going to go talk about European stocks. So by the time you get to the end of the article, you don't you don't know what you read that actually supports this assertion here in the title. So Rob, I guess uh, what what is your opinion as a former professional yes, auditor? Yes, and actually, uh, I found, I'll send you this one. Here is the, the, the video with JM Bullion. I'll, I'll send it there if you feel like sharing it. But as an auditor, I mean, you have experience in this. If you were auditing whether that headline, and uh, I'll pull up the volume chart, because would you believe that we would see that same volume pattern where right on the spikes down, there's a lot of volume. Would you believe it if I showed that? It would not surprise me. And I will take the screen share for a moment here. Here it is. And this one, here it is. And Rob, perhaps as a little present, you've been an incredible friend to me. It's truly an honor getting <laughs> to know you. So, can you pull up the volume from this week on the COMAX? And just for the benefit of the audience and everyone watching, can you try and recreate the face that you made while you were sitting on my couch last night when, when we pulled up the screen <laughs> and you saw that? Can you try? I saw this and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was a billion ounces uh, Thursday, Friday last week. And then I saw this and I fell, almost fell off your couch. That's 1.6 billion ounces of silver paper they dropped. Rob, as an auditor, <laughs> what what grade would you give to this? Is that possible? What would you do? You would look at that and you'd have to say, okay, show me who's trading this and why. Um, because it, it's totally, and when you look at the settlements, the settlements is really the key here. So I'm going to click on the settlements tab and you can see what these prices are settling at. Um, it's it's just a slam down. So we, it wasn't too long ago, beginning of the week, we're at 29 bucks. So you see 87,000 contracts close Wednesday at $26. And if you go back to Tuesday, we're going to see 211,000 contracts closing at 26,402. And if you want to go back the previous day, when, when we had touched on Monday morning, 30.01, I believe, they hammered it with 328,000 contracts to keep it below 30. 
it, it's very obvious what's being done here. It's the physical, I'm sorry, the paper trade used to, to drag down the price. And that's right there in the settlement data. I mean, it, it's that you don't even have to be an auditor to see that. You just have to know how to read a table. All right, Rob, uh, I know you have a few things. So I'm just going to show a couple last things and then I will let you wrap up from there. And again, mm -hmm. appreciate um, you allowing me to share this because I think it's really important where, and that's what I know you've seen it. We've talked about it for years. There's a lot of people mm -hmm. are new to it. They see physical buying things that would indicate people are buying and then they go into these SLV and these products and the, the price gets smashed and they get scared out. We've seen that time over time after uh, time again for years. And I'll just pull this up again and ask you your opinion as a former professional auditor. <laughs> you showed me the JP Morgan headline at five in the morning downgrading the sector when here. Uh, so let's say this is $29, 2880 or so, mm -hmm. whatever price it was. I don't have the timestamp on here. So there's February one, here's Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Just eyeballing it. Looks like, in fact, what, even if this was before four o'clock, maybe that'd be even more dirty because it could certainly appear as if somebody front ran it. We also commented how margins were raised. So there's tighter margin, you know, the conditions are tighter. So people can get blown out easier on big moves. It's more leverage than ever. You've heard Bart Chilton confirm when I asked him before, when we see these things. So this isn't my opinion. This is the former CFTC regulator who was part of the investigation and basically flat out called the, agent, the CFTC a fraud. One of their former regulators, he didn't use that word, but you can watch the interview and see if that's not an appropriate Rob, is that an appropriate recap of what the effect of his words? Yep. And I asked him, because I'd seen this for years, and when I finally got that one chance, one of the, I'm grateful that I got to ask him, say, my understanding is that, especially when you have like right at the $25 mark, here it was a little higher, but what I've come to understand is people nudge it, you know, the banks kind of hammer some bids, but then stop orders get triggered. Algorithms get triggered. And I mean, who knows? I mean, the JP Morgan in their confessions acknowledge, their traders acknowledge how when they were spoofing, they were screwing their customers. And I know there's a lot of people in the metals community who say, well, spoofing is the least of it. I will hold on a second and hear me out because I wonder if that's a matter of semantics. Yeah, I think I would call this leveraging up and hammering the bids, just taking them mm -hmm. out with, it's like when you short sell a stock, but there you have to borrow or locate a share. You don't have mm -hmm. to do that on the COMEX. So they just hammer the bids. But when I asked Barton saying, "My whatever you call it, these guys hold the customer books. They know where the orders are. They know the charts that the tech funds read. And I said, is that your impression that they nudge it a little bit, then it triggers the stuff, it drops. And he mm -hmm. says, yeah, well, actually that's a really good interpretation of it. And then he talks about spoofing for three minutes before saying the only difference in what I asked and what he said is that now the way the mm -hmm. markets are levered up when they spoof, the moves are even bigger. So I would just say in the CFTC's mind, I, to me, it seems like they call that spoofing. JP Morgan just got fined $920 million for spoofing on hundreds of thousands of occasions. And when you have record buyers and Rob, you can, fortunately, we put the thing on the, on the web on Monday morning before this happened, where we said, you know, be prepared. They're probably going to, it's probably coming. And what I would equate it to is when, I, when somebody bluffs at the poker table and they make a massive bet going all in. And the only way they can win is, is that the other guy folds. In this case, the other guy is all of the people out there who have stayed in silver and were buying silver because they called the bet. And Rob, if you can tell me any other scenario, you know, I, again, I'm always careful of how I phrase things to not lead people inappropriately, but when, right before you came over, when I, after all of that, and then I heard 61 million in SLV and I thought, We, we don't know if there's a single ounce in there except for we're trusting the word of JP Morgan. 
who just ran a pump and dump. Okay. And Rob, you said I could announce this on your show. I've been very critical of JP Morgan, especially mm -hmm. in the last couple of weeks. I'm not I'm saying this respectfully. If Jamie Dimon or representative of JP Morgan would like to speak, I'll, I'll have a civil conversation. I'm not trying to say anything behind anyone's back. I don't have any interest in doing that, but it's, it's a crime that is affecting people. But again, that's why I appreciate you letting me say this here because I think it's that important for people to understand and I don't claim to know everything. That's why I keep saying you're an auditor. I keep, you know, I've talked to many people about this today saying somebody construct, mm -hmm. don't even construct a plausible alternate scenario. Give, give me something that's silly or like a wild conspiracy theory. But what am I missing here? And lastly, if we saw when the metal goes up, the price goes up, there's a panic to buy. And when the price goes down, people buy twice as much so for anyone out there wondering what's really going on, I would ask you, given that, which direction does the price have to go for people to stop buying now that they know the truth behind something they've been lied to for decades about? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think they stop buying. If it goes down, they're going to buy more. If it goes up, I think they'll continue to buy because I think they, if, if it's incredibly undervalued, you don't stop. Until you until you feel like it's gotten towards some sort of peak, and I don't obviously we're not there. I'd say the same thing to the audience. And I'm saying this seriously, respectfully. If somebody mm -hmm. can see something that I'm missing, I mean, by all means, I want to. I I bet this aggressively today. I'm not saying it, Rob. I mm -hmm. think you know that. Mm -hmm. I've been training for 12 years to do this. Mm -hmm. I called my partner, you know, right before the close, and I was putting things on and saying. Is, is there anything you've heard yet? Is there anything you can point to? And even like a rumor to the contrary, she said no. I, I will touch my heart with my honor saying that. I'm not, I'm mm -hmm. trying not to lead people astray, but those are the facts. If somebody else can see it, please send me a message or, mm. or please go investigate it. All those what I think has happened is that there's a lot of people, you know, for a while, Rob, it was you, me, Bill Murphy, and, you know, a bunch of people who watched. Now you have a whole hundreds of, or thousands or who knows how many people, because it was always based on a secret, mm -hmm. but they just went all in and the, while everybody was watching, they bluffed and they got caught mm -hmm. is at least as best as I can see it. If somebody else, and again, respectfully, if JP Morgan has a representative and they can explain it, I will behave myself and have a respectful conversation on my show. People can send this interview to JP Morgan. You can cut out the clip of me saying it. Mm -hmm. I don't go around saying things about people. I don't, I've, I've spent the first half of my life being angry and miserable. I don't, I know the danger of negative energy. So the last thing I want to do, you know, I try to, Mm -hmm. bring a good energy wherever I go. So, but there's, there's a point at which when you see, when you see a crime, I was taught to speak up and do what I can to prevent it, which, so I guess along those lines, Rob, if you, mm -hmm. you can add, if you have anything else about SLV, seeing what's happening. And then when it just hit me, only thing we have is a promise from JP Morgan, whether some of it's there, all of it's there or, the only plausible explanation I've heard of where that metal could be coming from if it is uh, actually in there is if JP Morgan is depositing it. And Rob, maybe before we wrap up and I'll let you do your thing, could you pull up JP Morgan's COMEX? Interestingly, they had 160 million ounces back in July when those July delivery hits. You remember how the first day 30 was switched into the registered to eligible or the other way around. I get those confused. You remember what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Amazingly, despite paying a billion dollars, they now have 190 million ounces. And I was curious if that has changed. I might add for all the people watching at home, if you've ever wondered if you can make a difference in the corruption of these markets, people go through these reports, go through the COMEX site. If we have hundreds or thousands of people all compiling evidence. I know there's new groups on uh, Reddit forums. There's new groups everywhere. Talk with your friends. You can find this stuff. It's the, 
they, they got caught. The evidence is there. I'm going through as much as I can. I know Rob is and other people, but keep spreading the message, sharing the stuff. And uh, I'm putting as much on my Twitter feed or in the videos or sending out, I'm taking the time to write things so it can be as clear and easy to understand and verify. So you don't have to take my word for it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just missed something here. Or there. So, so you can, all these things you can check. And what do you got there, Rob? All right, this is the Metal Depository Statistics for COMEX and JP Morgan. Ooh, look at this. They're sitting at 193 million now. That's quite a bit more than, right. than, they, than they've had. Yeah. But this was, I checked, I think it was last week and it was at 193 million. So that's Where's another the thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in case, uh, Deso, if you're watching, I know you do a great job of tracking this. Uh, keep us posted. Uh, Rob, if you find stuff, there's, it's yeah. like, my last thought, and then I'll, uh, I'll promise I'll stop this time, is that I spent the last decade when I found out about the silver thing thinking, all right, if you were at Enron or Bernie Madoff, even if you were like sweeping the floors there, you know, when something's unraveling like that, people start getting nervous. You know, there's, it's like the big short. They said, where were the signs? Well, they looked. How'd they find them? They looked. So I always, that's how, where the big silver short book came from, where the channel came from, where it was just, I never guessed it would take this long or that this is how it would finally unfold. But I remember thinking, all right, what are the signs that you would see right before the thing's finally about to go? And again, I'm, I'm a human. I don't, I can't see tomorrow, but as someone who's been trained to investigate I at least put my uh, a large, almost the majority of my my money behind it today. And if anybody else can help me figure out, or if Jamie Dimon or a representative from J.P. Morgan would like to disprove me or discredit what I'm saying, lastly, uh, there is a law uh, hedge fund run by Daniel Shack that has already taken a case to J.P. Morgan, and J.P. Morgan settled rather than go through the, dis the discovery or court process. I don't believe that they would ever do that. And um, intriguing to think if you find out mm. what argument he used to get them to write a check, I think that's another option available to people. And now, especially because this latest, Rob is an auditor, would you say, is, can you see, an, what, what could JP Morgan say to you that would make you feel that that headline and this trading action was not a felony? Show me the data. So I would want to go audit their books. I mean, nothing they could say to me to make, make me believe that. I'd have to see the actual data, the transactions and, and all of that to, to believe it. You'd have to put it right in front of my eyes because the evidence that we see that we're, that, that's available to us doesn't add up. It very clearly does not add up. They would have to prove it. So there, I'll add that. If, if, if JP Morgan would open their books so a professional auditor could look, I would be happy to apologize if anything I've said is incorrect. Mm -hmm. I know that I would be liable because I've said it forcefully, but I think it's that important for it to be clear to people. To be clear, my background included two years at Moody's, going to Wharton for an MBA, seven years running an equity options specialist post, American Stock Exchange and New York Stock Exchange, before as I began researching this. In fact, and I also had a large option position on in 2011, so I was trading it back then. And when I got hammered on that, I don't think it was that I couldn't accept it, but I'm thinking, all right, well, it's weird that this came down when they're printing more money than ever. So that was what I was never able to get away from it because it's like I never found an explanation. And if there's mm -hmm. something that I've been incorrect about all these years later, and mm -hmm. JP Morgan will allow a professional auditor to take a look at the books, then I'll, I'll have to deal with the consequences but I will invite them to that process. And uh... you would not have to deal with the consequences because they haven't made it transparent and they've invited these questions and, and they've been asked about it in the press. And they've and already been caught. They paid a billion dollars. So and, they're, and the CME group and the CFTC have been asked about it as the, the metal depositories and the regulator, at least on the COMEX side of the market. I, I asked two directors point blank and they declined. So if you're going to decline publicly, you can't then come back and say uh, you're spreading misinformation because we, pro we provided ample opportunity for them to come and talk about this. They've had their chances.